Now I'm in 1 Thessalonians 5. I'm not in verse 14 is what I wanted to get to. Now we exhort you, brethren, warn those who are unruly. That means insubordinate. They just don't, don't want to go with the flow of where you're going. Or it actually can mean idle. That word can mean idle. Just, just idle, unruly. Now watch. Comfort the faint-hearted. How are you going to comfort the faint-hearted if you don't have an answer for why they're faint-hearted? I think we're just looking for an emotional response. We're looking to feel better instead of believe better. Are you with me? So if somebody comes in here and they're faint-hearted, how can you encourage them from being faint-hearted unless you help change their perspective and their view on the thing that's taken away their heart? Because here's the thing. If the thing doesn't change then we never have an answer unless it changes. wonder if it has to do with a person. wonder if it has to do with a family situation, and that person is just obstinate, and they're set against God, and they're apostate, and there's no change, and we're all interceding for them to change, but we don't have a higher answer for their faint-heartedness until they change. No, there's a higher answer. See, you comfort the faint-hearted with truth. Are you guys with me? I think we think we pray for them, and God makes them feel better and now they're walking with this feeling of being better and not faint-hearted and it's just an emotional thing but if they don't change how they view the situation or change their belief they're going to need prayer again and they're going to be faint-hearted again are you following me come on it's just a list here you're going to comfort the faint-hearted you're going to uphold the weak so there's times where you just got to be a strength in somebody's life even though everybody must bear their own heavy load you can step in and carry some logs man you can like step in and take the pressure off so they're not overwhelmed so that's one way we can help people who knows in a congregation like this you're going to have these kind of things coming in the room right so we all have to understand but as a group here i'm just talking to you as if you're all part we can grow be mature take responsibility for our own life, work out our own salvation because we have a relationship with Jesus and we're coming in here with a healthy eye, a single eye, and as a man thinketh, so he is. So we always have comfort to offer. We always have a truth to give. We always have strength to uphold the weak. Why? Because we're living in Christ Jesus. If we all come here and have a mentality where we're all needy, we all need ministry, and we're all getting beat up through life, and this is our safe haven, you're never going to see the strength of the kingdom of God. I'm just talking plain. This is not your safe haven. This is where you get sharp and empowered, and this is where you stay focused, right here. It's not just your safe haven. And it might feel like that for a season, and it's okay, but there's a lot of people running around looking for a place to feel safe, and then they get hurt and let down even in the church. So they're huddling in a room with four other people that are hurt, and they're all comforting each other in their pain, but nobody's being healed. You see what I'm saying? It's just a bad thing.